Welcome back everybody. So in today's episode, we're gonna finish off all the metal work on the rocking chair frame I'm building for my wife, and then we're gonna set up the garage. We're gonna get it clear coated. Let's get to it. So it's been a good seven or eight months since I've even touched my welding machine or any welding machine for that matter. However, I'm pretty happy with those. I'm not gonna complain about that. So I'm out trying to just finish up the sanding on this chair frame and my compressor is still struggling to keep up. So I figured, what the heck, let's try my cheap, I think this is like 150 bucks maybe, Milwaukee uh, plug-in sander and it's running like a champ. Um, it's uh, obviously only limited by electricity, uh, not air. Um, so yeah, it's working super well. Don't discount electric tools. I see uh, a lot of tools in uh, the auto body industry. Anyway, you're going electric, everyone's running electric impacts, drills, uh, even polishers now are going more electric. So yeah. Use what you have and uh, use it if it works. So we've hit everything 40 grit. Uh, now something to address before we hit it with 80 grit is uh, drilling the holes for our armrests, which I'm still working on. But I wanna get this done now before we hit it with 80 grit because I am gonna use some cutting oil that I wanna wipe off before we sand it one more time with the 80. So uh, I'm gonna start here, I can take some measurements, use our center punch uh, to punch for our holes. I've got a 5 30 seconds bit there, which is just slightly bigger than our number six threads. Uh, I'm actually going to pick up some brass hardware for this. I think it'll look slick. Uh, so yeah, then we'll uh, drill those holes and then I'll go around with this um, countersinking bit just to smooth everything out, make sure everything's nice and flush. And yeah. So I got this side all finished, uh, as you can see screw in here beautiful and that's it's nice and flush so i think that'll look good with the brass in there once this is all clear coated uh had one minor brain fart however um i don't know if we saw on the time lapse there but there's not quite enough room to get this guy underneath there and unfortunately i don't have a smaller drill or a right angle drill however i'll just put um round headed bolts on or round headed screws in the bottom there not a big deal um it's not going to be visible anyway, and it's not like people are going to be feeling the bottom of the armrest to admire my craftsmanship. So, uh, the visible ones at least will be countersunk. We'll do this side here real quick, and then we'll move on. All right, guys, so I got this sanded to where I want it. Uh, I'm happy with it. It's nice, relatively even finish. Still looks... Uh, Still looks like bare metal though, looks industrial, sort of how I wanted it. A um, couple things to contend with now. Uh, one, the shop is dirty, uh, so we need to give it a sweep. So I'm gonna get this, uh, I'm gonna put some anchor points on the ceiling, gonna get this thing hung so it's out of our way. We can sweep underneath it, around it, yada yada. Uh, another thing to contend with is space. Uh, my garage is a disaster. I got strollers on strollers on strollers. I got a miniature quad, I got the snow blower in here. So we're running out of space. I was initially going to take this whole side of the garage here and uh, more or less mask off the whole garage so I could have lots of room to move around. However, 
Um, I, I'm a sucker for punishment. So if you guys saw my video where I sprayed the Ford Escape in my garage here, I'll throw a clip of that on right now. As you can see, it did not go so great for me. My uh, airflow situation was not great. However, I got a better idea this time. So I am going to be masking off a small portion of the garage, smallish. Uh, so I'm going to try to go, so you see my window there and I got my window there. I'm going to sort of mask over just in front of my toolbox there about to where I'm standing and then across. And I'm going to get a fan input fan on that window and an output fan on that window. So hopefully get some flow through. Um, yeah, let's see if that works. But uh, yeah, let's get back at her. All right, something else we have to contend with here. Winter's finally here in Alberta. So we have to deal with the cold weather. So I got my little heater up in the corner there. That's gonna be boxed in with me when I mask everything off here. Um, I'll talk more about that once we start spraying. But uh, yeah, so that's gonna make it an issue when we do start blowing air through. We gotta keep it warm in here. That little heater barely keeps it warm enough as it is. So that's gonna be something we're fighting with. We're in good shape guys, chairs hung, our fans are mounted. Uh, that fan, I was gonna mount it right to the window initially and just put a um, filter right in the window. I realize that's not necessary though. I can just draw air out of the garage, which can be slightly warmer than outside. I'm still gonna crack that window though, just to allow some airflow in because uh, obviously we'll create a vacuum if we don't have either the door or the window open and I'd rather just have that window cracked. So we'll do that. Uh, all we have to do now, let's run a piece of poly around the outside. A uh, good way to judge on something like that is using your wingspan. Obviously my wingspan is quite large because I'm quite tall. I learned this in the industrial uh, end though, because uh, I'm always painting big stuff. You don't want to be pulling off like an extra 10, 15 feet when you're wrapping something that's 60 feet long. So you can just use your arm span. So like from here, so roughly there. So it's roughly two arm spans to get this back wall. It's gonna be roughly the same there. So at the end of the day, I'm probably gonna do eight arm spans going all the way around this. I'll throw you guys in a time lapse. Let's tape this up. So I cracked the windows outside. We've got that fan running and that fan running. This is our input fan. That's our output. And uh, it seems to be holding pressure. We're slightly over pressurized, but I can crack this guy up. One more notch. I almost let that run for a minute and see how it goes. But overall, I'm happy. On the bright side, I don't think I'm gonna smoke myself out like the last time I sprayed in the garage. So that's good news. So I mixed up my clear there, that's uh, Imperium Euro Performance Clear, uh, it's a 2 to 1 mix ratio. Uh, that's more of an expensive clear than I would normally use for something like this. However, uh, it was left over from a previous project, the hardener was borderline expired, so I figured it'd be perfect to throw on this uh, and uh, not go to waste. Uh, so I can go over a few of the techniques I'm using here while I'm spraying. Something I've learned spraying in an industrial setting is that whenever there's like thin tubes and pipes like this, I very rarely actually use my full trigger. I think the only time I used a full trigger pull on this chair was for the seat and the seat back, just where there were those uh, thicker pieces. But for all the tubes, I, I like to hold my gun at a little bit of an angle and I only feather my trigger, uh, which means I just partially pull it. And what that does is it keeps your fan pattern a little bit more narrow and uh, less product comes out. So you're not uh, sort of spraying as much just into the atmosphere. Ideally, you're trying to get more of it to land on the substrate. Uh, like if you're just spraying a flat car panel, obviously you want to be full triggering pretty much all the time when you're spraying a clear coat. However, in a case like this, it's a complex part, a lot of angles, a lot of shapes. So in this case, I started at the bottom, worked my way sort of around, worked my way up for my first coat. And then usually I would go in the same direction uh, for my second coat. However, you'll see in the time lapse, I actually just start at the top, work my way down, which is the way I normally spray in a downdraft booth. One more thing I should touch on is that little electric heater up in the corner there. So I used that before I started spraying to keep the booth and the air and the project warm. Uh, then I shut it off, I sprayed the job, and then once all the overspray had been pumped out of my little makeshift booth there, I turned it back on. You don't want to turn your garage into a bomb. The uh, fumes from solvent warm base coat 
and clear coat are extremely flammable, so you don't want to be setting those off. Uh, another thing to look at on that are the fans. You want to make sure you're running explosion-proof electric fans. In this case, they are not uh, is a risk I took, but it's something I would not recommend someone else do. And it's the next day in the shop here, guys. As you can see, this is still beautiful and shiny, uh, nice and dry now. Um, it was actually a dry couple hours after I sprayed it. Uh, this Imperium clear sprays or dries pretty quickly. Uh, actually, love the look of the welds with the clear on there. Looks pretty sweet. Uh, this is exactly what I was going for. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, just a quick note: I would never do this on a car unless it was like a show car and just going to be designed to go to one show, and that's about it. Um, clear coats are not chemically designed to bond to bare metal. Um, this being a chair, it's going to sit inside. It's not going to be hit by any UV exposure. The only place to really get, get any abrasion to it is probably the bottom of these runners here. And honestly, if that wears out, sort of whatever, I can always respray the bottom there or put an extra coating there. But uh, yeah, for a piece of furniture, I think this turned out pretty cool. Looking forward to finishing off the woodworking. That'll probably happen in our next episode. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. Uh, spraying this is a ton of fun. I'm happy my little makeshift booth worked a little better than the last time I sprayed in here. Uh, if you guys enjoyed today's episode, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you next time.